They've all sold their kidneys to survive. The organ trade isn't new in Afghanistan, but it's just got more desperate. <laughs> Every single person here is hungry, and poverty is driving already poor people to even more extreme measures. This man tells us, we've no choice, we've already sold our kidneys, now we've got to sell our children. And they're suffering terribly. The Taliban takeover meant a massive cut in aid, and these are people with few options. We've taken efforts to conceal their identities for their own safety. It's a highly conservative society, but I'm allowed into a room with the women. They agree to me filming their scars, some just a few months old. The women have sold their kidneys for less than the men, around $1,500 an organ. There's a lucrative trade with many organs going to Iran, but the money's still not enough. Most of these women are still teenagers with multiple babies but few rights. And now they're being forced to sell their children so they all have a better chance of survival. No one can tell me to sell my children, but we're struggling to keep them alive, she says. And that's why we've thought of selling them. Maybe better for them and we get food for the others. It is a tragic situation and one they see no quick end to. There is a lot of women there who've sold their kidneys and now thinking of the last option, which is selling their children too. The aid is fought over. What's here is far outweighed by the huge need. It's really very hard in Afghanistan right now, she says, and there are too many people like me who don't have a husband or a father to support them. For women who aren't allowed to work under the Taliban and aren't even allowed to complain about that, it's misery on misery. She's crying, telling us her bag of flour has been stolen. I don't know what I'm going to do, she says. Foreign aid's not feeding into the country, whilst politicians wrestle over dealing with a Taliban regime holding power because they're holding the guns. You can ask everyone here, they're happy, this fighter says. Security's good. A man interrupts. Yes, security's good, but we don't have any money or food. The children's ward of Herat's burns unit is full. Little people horribly injured, trying to keep warm in midwinter. Aisha is in constant pain, with both hands and both feet very badly burned. Her family can't afford to pay for the dressings for her wounds, which are now infected. Without surgery in days, she'll die. But surgery comes at a cost they can't afford, and both her grandmother and her doctor know this probably seals her fate. She'll be taken home to die there. I have a bad sensation because of lack of materials. I have the ability to, uh, to treat him, but uh, the lack of materials, the bad situation of economic of people, don't let me to, to help him as much as I can. Back at the community outside Herat, where whole families have already sold their kidneys, we're with the village elder who's urgently trying to persuade this family not to sell one of their babies. I urge the world, please don't leave us alone, he says. Stop this tragedy when people are selling their children or part of their bodies. But both parents have already sold their kidneys. They've already lost a child who starved to death and they still have eight eight little mouths to feed. I've already lost one. I can't see them all lose their lives, she says. At least someone else will feed them. These are decisions no parent wants to make. But hunger can break even a mother's bond with her babies. Alex Crawford, Sky News, Herat.